Technical Veterinary Learning TVL Channel Presents TVL Channel Founded and produced by Professor Ahmed Namdouh Sharif, Professor of Epidemiology and Infectious Diseases, Ex Head of the Department of Veterinary Medicine, Ex Vice Dean of Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Benisweif, Egypt. We will discuss now the third part of IBR or the rest of infectious proven reutrachitis disease. In the third part, we will speaking about laboratory diagnosis of this disease and the control that occur all over the world, including Egypt and Middle East, as well as Africa. Diagnosis of IBR including both field diagnosis that includes the epidemiological situation, clinical signs, and post-mortem lesions, and this discussed in the first and second part of this films. Number two, laboratory diagnosis that will be discussed in this film. Laboratory diagnosis of infectious proven renotracheitis. The most important step in any laboratory diagnosis for its success is the samples collection. Samples collection for IBR disease will be samples collected from living animals are blood during feverish condition, serum, nasal and ocular surcharges, tracheal lavage and nasal swabs. Samples from dead animals include portions from the lung edges, tracheal scrapings and bronchial wash. The perfect and most accurate step is the isolation of viral agent. Boven herbis virus 1 isolated on proven and hog kidney cells as well as proven terpenate cells with rapid and characteristic cytopathic effect on this tissue culture. Number two, immunofluorescent technique. This technique is used for detection either antigen or antibodies of proven herbis virus 1. This diagram explains the immunofluorescent technique. From infected cattle or suspected infected cattle, we collect parts of ovaries, lungs, uterus, and or oviduct. Then, if we put them with the reagents of the test that contain the antibody, we have a positive picture that appear here as A for the ovaries, B for lungs and uteruses, and C for oviduct. The green dots that appear in these pictures denoted two positive results by means that presence of BOHV1 virus, either with 1.1 subtype, 1.2 subtype, and or 1.3 subtype. ELISA test is an important test for detection of presence of moving herbis virus 1. Polymerase chain reaction, or BCR, is the most accurate and most sensitive modern technique of molecular biology used now on a wide scale for a specific diagnosis of different infectious microbial organisms including bovine herbis virus 1 with all its subtypes. This figure for a garage gel electrophoresis image that shows the BCR product analysis of bovine herbis virus 1, B gene, where DNA a molecular weight ladder of 100 base per pair lean from 2 to 11 are positive, lean from 2 up to 11 are positive, 
field samples at 175 by BCR product. Lane 1, post of control, and lane 12 is a negative control. Number 5, sequencing the genome of alpha herpes virus. They are modern techniques of molecular biology used now on a wide scale for a specific diagnosis of different microbial organisms genes that differentiate between different microbes according to their genes and according to their distribution all over the world. This diagram showing the phylogenetic tree of alpha herpes virus. We will see moving herpes from virus 1, 3, 2, 5, equidy alpha herpes virus, field herpes virus, and human alpha herpes virus. The differentiation here is done according to the gene distribution of different species of the virus. This phylogenetic tree can be used to monitoring the presence of the microorganism at any time, the distribution of any microorganism at any time, from one part of the world to the other, or from the changes that occur within the viruses inside the same society. Control of infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, they say. Control of bovine herpes virus 1 infections will be according to the following steps. Number one, application of good management in calves. Number two, prevention of overcrowdings, where each pair have to be contained, not more than 30 calves, and each group should have the same ages and come from the same environment or same society. Number three, newly purchased calves should be isolated from several weeks before joining to the other's brothers. The fourth step in the control of bovine herpes virus 1 infection is offering of balanced calf starter grain ration supplement with essential vitamins and minerals as well as good quality hay with at the beginning of the third week of age. Number five, urgent treatment for diseased calves to avoid the spreading of the infection. Number six, vaccination. Vaccination is widely used both to protect the cattle clinically in the case of infection and significantly reduce the shedding of the virus. Vaccination provides herd immunity which lowers the likelihood of an animal coming into contact with an infected animal. Immunity usually lasts approximately six months to one year, according to the type of the vaccine. Vaccination against IPR done by two types. Number one, traditional vaccine. Number two, marker vaccine. Traditional type of vaccinations done from 1956 up to 1990s at the last century. These traditional vaccines prevent severe clinical signs of the disease, reduce the amounts of viral particles shed after infection, couldn't restrict infection spread in some herds or regions and interferes with routine serological diagnosis and epidemiological surveys. Number two, marker vaccines or DIVA vaccine. Its name means differentiation of infected from vaccinated animal. These vaccines come to counterattack the bad effect of the traditional one. These vaccines Deleting one of the non-essential viral glycoproteins, mainly glycoprotein E or GE, of bovine herpes virus, which was made commercially available. This vaccine allows distinction of traditionally vaccinated cattle 
from infected animals. GE positive from those vaccinated with the GE deleted marker or GE negative by using a suitable serological test. Therefore, GE deleted marker vaccines can serve as a valuable tool for disease control strategy. Vaccination after an animal has been infected decreases shedding of the disease and reduces reactivation of the latent of the virus. But this, although not completely, inactivated polyvalent vaccine for para influenza 3, bovine adenovirus type 3, bovine reovirus type 1, BVD, and IBR vaccines were given intramuscular with three doses with two weeks apart, beginning from one month of age. Number two, inactivated and modified life vaccine against IBR. Herba bovis IBR marker, live vaccine that used in European countries since 2011, but an aphylactic type reaction in cattle was reported in Spain and Italy at January and March 2022. So this vaccine become under observation for detecting causes and feed out. This is a gene vaccine form CDDEL strain can differentiate between infected animal has high level of IgE antibodies and those vaccinated. This vaccine intended used for calves from three months of age until adult ages and decrease the secretion level of the virus in the field. Vaccination schedule beginning from three months of age. First dose given at three months of age. Then first reactivation or the poster dose will be after six months. Then after 12 months, there will be next reactivation. Next reactivation dose by Bovil's IBR marker live or Bovil's IBR marker inactivated vaccines. Nasal gene is another type of vaccine. This type induces cellular immunity that lasts for about 10 to 12 days post vaccination. This vaccine used in emergency cases to stop clinical signs and deaths in newly born calves. This picture giving an idea about how we can giving the nasal vaccine. This vaccine used the cellular vaccination. These are the shape of different IBR vaccines that present all over the world, including Middle East area, Egypt as a country, and Africa as a society. Keep following up for all updated facts and information about all animal infectious diseases and epidemiology through subscribe this channel. See you later.